Okay, so I'm going to go back to the component uh, style of presentation. Uh, I'm going to talk about a new uh, analytics teaching case. Uh, it's part of the uh, sort of case studies that we developed at the Carlson Analytics Lab. Uh, actually, I want to take a step. Uh, I want to take a. I want to take a, a. I want to take five minutes to explain uh, what the Carlson Analytics Lab does, um, and you'll see how that sort of fits in into this particular case, which is about. Uh, trying to extract uh, business value from the exhaust fume of data that we see everywhere, right? So you think about, you go, in, uh, you go to an airport, you connect to Wi-Fi, there is some data that's been generated, right? So is there any business value in it? Are there any real dollars associated with it? This was a question for the Mall of America, which I'll tell you a little bit about in just a second. So, so step back, the Carlson Analytics Lab is the uh, key kind of you know, vehicle that facilitates experiential learning in our curriculum. Uh, you know, our curriculum is designed around four pillars, exploratory, predictive, causal, and prescriptive. And all of this really comes to life uh, in the projects that we do with companies. In the spring semester, 14 week long projects, Duh uh, gave you an example of a few of those when he presented. But since 2015, uh, these are the companies we work with. So a lot of, you know, good, good companies, 3M, Best Buy, Cargill, Land O'Lakes, McKinsey, multiple times, Mall of America, McKnight Foundation, so this is a non-profit. Um, so all kinds of interesting questions. Pretty much everything that we've talked about today, we've probably done a project on it uh, out here. And it's about, and we get, the important thing out here is, this, the, the way this works is we get the companies to pay for these projects, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is about a million dollars worth of projects. Uh, we charge about thirty to $35,000 per project. That actually makes the companies uh, more interested in collaborating with the students so that they get the value out of it, right? Also then, uh, for, the, for the students, uh, again, you know, they, they feel that this is a real question with the real dollars associated with it. Um, so this particular case actually came out of the uh, project we did at the Mall of America uh, in year one. Um, and then, then, so these people have now become our anchor tenants. They know a thing or two about anchor tenants. Uh, so they come back to our lab. Uh, again, they came back this year, and they're going to sign a three-year contract now. So we just kind of put. So I'll, I'll get into the case in just a second. Uh, I wanted to touch a little bit upon the approach that we do. How do we go to these companies and convince them to give us their question, give us their data, give us 30,000 bucks? Uh, we actually have a very, very simple format. So this is a one-page document that we get them to fill out. It goes back to the uh, early kind of collaboration that we did with McKinsey to set this up. Uh, one, of the, one of the guys who was on our CXO board is actually the Chief Operating Officer of McKinsey Digital, Prashant Gandhi. So he helped us with this. He said, go, go, we go out, you talk to the companies, and, and basically ask them, again, the situation, complication, key question. Uh, and then for these analytics projects, we also kind of layer in end use and data, right? So this is the conversation that Ellen Trader, who's my uh, manager, managing director for the lab, and I typically go and have with companies. This is what they sign off on, um, and then we actually let the students lose. So we don't define it any further than this one page. Uh, and it's the student's job, actually, to then you know, be a consultant, to ask the questions, to, def to take this to the next level. And for that, again, uh, going back to sort of the problem-solving problem thing that Hemant was talking about earlier, we use a particular methodology in the lab, again, refined with the help of sort of McKinsey. So, so here, uh, basically, uh, we want to have clear milestones. It's a 14-week long project. You know, this, this stuff, some of the stuff is really intense. It works, you know, uh, uh, students want to go and, you know, start doing the data and the analytics on day one, and we have to actually pull them back. Say, no, 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 hold on, right? Do you actually know what problem you're solving? Um, so defining the question, you know, again, typical problem-solving kind of approach. Uh, but what we do is we kind of help the students who are basically like STEM background, they, they, they don't have experience in this. They haven't done an MBA, right? So this is, this is stuff that they don't actually like. They think this is documentation, right? They think this is busy work. They want to go and run like random forest. They want to run XGBoost. They want to do all this stuff, but, but we have to you know, pull, pull them back and get them to think a little bit about this, right? So, so what we do then is we start giving them, again, you know, uh, we, we say that you have to kind of iterate between these doing phases and thinking phases, right? Hey, what are actually, what, 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 what problem are you trying to solve? Validate it, talk to the client. So they have weekly calls with the clients on, the, on that. Uh, then, so understand, plan, solve, and convince. That's a big part of this, right? So they have to go back and make sure that, you know, people can understand, that the clients can understand what they're doing. Um, and get the work deployed. So, so now what we've done is we've actually, uh, 14 weeks earlier, we used to do deployment after the 14 weeks. We used to say the company will give you one more week. We've actually pulled that back now. We've now added, so we want to finish the work by week 12 and have two weeks for deployment. Uh, because that, again, you know, there are a lot of organizational challenges that come into uh, play at that stage. Okay? Um, and in terms of toolkits, again, from a problem-solving point of view, 
uh, you know, you get into all these things like, you know, the situation, this is the project definition sheet, this is the one pager that they sign off on. Then the students have to workshop and actually define a charter uh, with, with, with the client. Uh, then they get into sort of the whole issue tree approach, mo approach uh, mapping, so what, and logic tree. So these are things that basically, again, I wanted to put this out there because if you're trying to do this or if you're already doing this um, and you want some of these uh, artifacts, you need some of these tools, uh, I'll be happy to share them with, it, uh, with, with, with all of you. Okay? All right. So part of uh, what happens then is sometimes some of these projects, some of these clients are um, actually excited with the work. They're excited with, what, with the process and they allow us to write a teaching case out of it, okay? Uh, actually, in some cases, it also then becomes a feeder for actual research. So, so the work that we do with United Health Group and Optum, uh, you know, now that's starting to work its way into like PhD and faculty students actually solving projects out there, right? But teaching cases are fun. Uh, companies understand teaching cases, many of them have been through MBA programs, and we tell them that, look, there are actually a huge shortage of teaching cases with data sets for analytics, okay? So, so they get that. So, so this is, this is what I'll, I'll talk, talk to you about. So this is a new case. We just developed this. Uh, Lee, who is actually one of our communications gurus in the department, he helps us uh, write these things. So here, again, I'm going to use the same framework that I that have the students use. So the situation here is um, basically there's massive disruption happening for retail, physical retail, and for malls, right? So you can see these stories. I just picked these up yesterday. Stores are closing at an epic pace. Dying shopping malls are wrecking how work on suburban America. So this is like, you know, going to the mall is kind of, you know, as far as I've uh, been in this country, being like a part of the culture here, right? Uh, and this whole thing possibly could just disappear, right? You know, maybe the next generation doesn't go to the mall. Uh, so, so what can malls do to fight back, okay? And that's, that's where this whole story with the Mall of America comes up. Uh, this is a very, if you've been to Minneapolis, you might have been to the Mall of America. I actually don't like to go there. I only go there now when I have to meet the clients. Uh, <laughs> so I'm forced to go there. But it is a very cool place. Uh, you know, if you kind of just step aside, you know, like I you say, okay, fine, I agree that this is a cool place. It's massive. I mean, seven Yankee stadiums can fit inside it, right? There are roller coasters, there's aquariums, there's a nightclub, there are two hotels, you name it. I mean, and, and they get about 42 million visitors every, every year. Um, and 40% of them actually go there as a tourist destination, right? So these are people in Fargo or in, you know, um, you know, South Dakota who want to go out and, you know, make a trip out of this, right? Uh, they also get a lot of Japanese people, right? So, so they get, you know, they, they love to come there and shop all the big uh, brand names in some senses, right? So the 3 million international visitors. And in fact, this was one of the segments, uh, I'm going to get ahead of myself out here, but this is one of the segments the mall was really interested in being able to track using the Wi-Fi data, okay? So they actually need to be at the edge of the consumer experience. They want to, they want to, they want to be at figuring out what's the next thing we can do for these consumers so that they keep coming back and this kind of idea of the mall uh, still survives, okay? So, so that's the situation. The complication here is that, you know, consumers now expect free Wi-Fi. My 15-year-old, the first thing she does, wherever she goes, is look for, you know, is there free Wi-Fi, right? So this is an expectation. But for a place like the mall, this is a massive IT investment, right? So they, in this case, you know, they, their initial estimate was about $5 million, ended up costing them $7 million to, to put this out there, and you just can't go and say that, well, we have to put it because consumers expect it, right? I mean, that's kind of like a lame uh, story, right? That's not a very solid business case, right? So can we do more with it? Uh, and, and this is where Jeanette Smirka, who's actually the IT director, she's a real smart lady, she kind of had the sense that there is some value in this data, but it turns out they are like most organizations, right? Uh, uh, Rajiv Dewan was talking about this, you know, the, the companies that are not the Amazons, the Googles, the Facebooks of the world, they have no data scientists inside their team, right? But they hear about analytics, they hear about machine learning, this is important stuff, but you know, they don't even know what's possible. They, they don't even know what can be done, what, are, what kinds of questions uh, can be answered out there, right? So they have no organizational capabilities in data engineering, in you know, training data, predicting, none of this stuff, okay? Uh, so this is where, again, it was, it was good. Uh, I actually got this connection. They reached out to some faculty in the marketing department. Um, and this is fun because those people said, oh, no, no, we can't deal with this stuff. Talk to the IT guys, basically. So this is, this is how I got, you know. Uh, so it's nice to be friendly with them as well, right? <laughs> so I, so I, I thank Barbara all the time. It's, it's, yeah, amazingly. Um, so, so, so we got, so, so now, so, okay, that, so that's the complication. Uh, basically, in some sense, it's an old classic business value of IT investment kind of question, right? I mean, this is stuff that we've been talking about for decades. So now here, in this key question is, is there business value to the, to the mall in giving free Wi-Fi? What kinds of use cases uh, uh, can you come up with from mining the Wi-Fi data? Any, any quick thoughts? 
You can know. Anandos research, right? Anandos research. A trajectory based targeting of people. Okay. Um, by the way, they, they don't want to go that far. That, that works in China. Anandos did that in Beijing. They are skeptical about doing that in the US. Okay. So, Foot privacy traffic. perspective, where they think it will freak people out. Foot traffic in front of stores. And that then becomes a key data factor, data driven evidence to go and renegotiate leases with their tenants, right? So, you think about the next time they go to Nordstrom, they can quantify how many people we drove to your store and what time based on, you know, which particular day. So, they, they get that really, you know, again, again, hard, hard numbers on, on things that you would otherwise, you know, Measure. I like to think about it as I teach this is I, I, I tell the students that everything that you could do with Google Analytics on websites, we can now start doing this in a physical space, right? Because we know where people are going, right? Are they going to home page? Going to which page? So one of the use cases they came up with was, was you know, uh, those people who enter through the Nordstrom entrance, right? Uh, where else do they go in the mall, right? So they think about recommender systems uh, or you know. Giving actual recommenders to the uh, to the to the to the, to the mall uh, to the visitors, right? So so what is the typical? So the key questions here was uh, again because these people were so kind of you know at the basic level of the analytics ladder, you know what does the typical analytics project look like, right? What skill sets do we need? How do we design a pilot study? So we want to tell the companies that you know get started with something that's concrete that can then show some value and then you can start doing bigger things out there, right? Um, so where could this go in the future? So given this background, uh, it actually makes really sense to start at the exploratory stage. Right? So we talked about the four pillars. Let's do some basic exploratory analytics and see what we can find. There's lots of value in that itself, right? Especially again, given the scale of this business, given the scale of the data that I talked to you about just today, right? So the solution approach here uh, was basically segmentation, right? So unsupervised machine learning. Um, I will show you this data set. Uh, basically, this data set. Com comprises of individual level visits. So if you if you like if you were tracking people, if we had if we were you know your your Wi-Fi system here, if you were logged on as, as soon as you entered this building, if you walked around, your smartphone is designed to connect to the nearest access point, right? So similarly in the mall, as people walk around the mall, you get a sense of where they're going, right? Yeah. Do they keep track of the MAC address for repeat Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's the identifier. Um, um, so we have that. Um, and so, so that, was the, that was the unit of data. Each visit, we know again when people came in. Uh, now they have to do a lot of interesting data engineering to map that to the physical, actual physical locations in the mall, right? So you have to go out, actually you have to go and walk the mall. In fact, one of the proof of concepts to, to convince the client that their approach worked was that they actually um, tracked themselves. So they went to the mall, logged onto the Wi-Fi, identified themselves, their MAC ID in the data, and said, yeah, this is where we went. Right? So I actually showed them, showed them that in an animation. Um, so, yeah. Roughly what percent of people actually use Yeah, good, good question. So it's growing at a very good pace. This is about 30 to 35% right now. So again, yeah, generalizability what, issues maybe. What is there. that percentage? 30, 30 to 35. No, no, of what? Oh, of all the people who come to the mall, how many use the free Wi-Fi? Others may be on the data plan, like the cell phone network data plan. But there's probably selection bias. The yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, you know what, that's why I'm going to go back here. So we're not going here. We're not talking about causal inference, right? We're starting at a very, very basic level, um, right? We just want to get some interesting patterns that are already going to have a lot of value for it. Um, yeah. Do they have like something where, you know, if you just enter that Wi-Fi radius or something like that? Yeah. Yes, I have a device like that. I can device. check if I bring it here. I can know everybody's yeah. cell phone number and where you went. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 No. So we know. So they know. The the, mo the, mo the moment you connect. Well, it's gonna have to leave. I'm gonna yeah. have a hard privacy. Time, guys. Yeah. Like, right. Give me a break. So so we can have you know like the privacy conversation after that. Let, let me finish. Right. Uh, so 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 it's worse. So right. Exactly. You ain't seen nothing yet. Um, so, 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 so the data set we have for you all, if you want to use the case, is about 700,000, 800,000 rows, uh, you know, with each row being a particular, and I'll show you the data in just a second. It, it relates to the uh, sort of uh, the particular visit to the mall by a particular user. Uh, and to then start actually getting some insight that has some business value to, you know, uh, uh, let's say a leasing person at a mall or a marketing manager or the IT director, they have to do the, all the good stuff, right? So you can use this case as a way to show, you know, best practices in data in, in data uh, engineering and cleansing. So they have to go and do some data transformations, impute missing values, derive some features, 
Um, uh, the algorithm that we used out here was the scale means. You know, that's the one that scales. Um, and then they have to tell the story around it, right? They actually have to link this to you know things like uh, okay, people who go to North Star also go to A, B, and C, right? Or these are the segments of people that come in and they are possibly associated with with uh, you know high value uh, shopping behaviors, right? Um, and in fact, in year two of this project, this year Gautam was the was the project supervisor. Uh, one of the things we added to the uh, to the segmentation was what did these people do online, right? Because you, you control the Wi-Fi, you know when they're in the mall, how much time they're spending on Facebook. Right? So we can add those features as well. Um, so, so, and then make meaningful rec recommendations. Right? So this is, uh, this is a small snapshot of the attributes, but you can see the kinds of things out here. Right? Total time spent in level zero, total time spent in zero E section, um, right? total distinct levels visited, so uh, distinct access points connected to, and so on and so forth. Right? Yeah, Cindy. Does the mall have its own app? Uh, they do have an app, the yes. If they know the MAC address and where they're located, they could do location-based advertising through their app. Absolutely. So that's where they want to go. Yeah, yeah. So there are, again, you know, they're, they're a little bit, again, because of privacy concerns and, you know, freaking people out, they are not as aggressive as, let's say, you know, the partners that are in China. But they, they definitely, you know, that's where they want to go. Okay, that's why we have this sort of uh, anchor tenant agreement with them. So we're going to be working with them for the next three years, probably doing some of those things, right? So the instructor resources, if you want to use this case, there is a case narrative. I'll show you what it looks like quickly. There is a data set of the Wi-Fi logs. And there's a technical note. It's an R if you want to use Python or you know, RapidMiner or something. Probably not RapidMiner, but I would say R, Python. It's not that difficult. Uh, it has all the steps to do the data engineering and the k-means. It has some of the sample description of the clusters. Um, and so let me just show you some of these things, and then I will be done. Um, so, so this is what the... This is what the case looks like. You know, it's not, not a 20 page beast, uh, the kind of stuff you get from Howard. You know, it's basically, it goes in, you know, you, one of the things that we end up with is, there is a brainstorming, oops, sorry, 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 sorry. I got it, yeah. Okay, so, so that's the teaching case. Uh, we will, we'll share this, uh, we'll post it on, on the Slack or whatever, whichever channel is out there. Um, th so this is, again, you know, just a teaching case. Uh, I want to show you the, the technical note. So this is uh, actually one of my MS students. I hired him as a TA, and he wrote the teaching note. So that was cool. Um, and so, so, so this basically goes in. It kind of talks a little bit about the data, has the data ingestion, all the code in order to do that, data summarization, uh, missing values. Uh, box cost transformations, you name it. So basically all the stuff is there. Clustering, uh, how to select the optimal number of clusters, sort of the elbow criteria, uh, the segmentation. Here are kind of some of the results. Uh, so this, this kind of shows you, uh, looks like a six, six segment solution. There are things like people who are employees. So they found people who are there all day, right? Uh, in, you know, and, and, and the, the people who come in, you know, just, to, just near the bus stop or the light rail station out there, right? So these are people not interesting, so you actually set, set them out. You can detect those guys very easily now. Um, and, the, and you can see how these things, now you can look at average number of visits in 30 days, how they vary by segment, right? So again, for these people, they, they, you know, it's hard for them to model or think about 770,000 different types of people, but they can think about six groups of people and, and do design policies for that, right? So that's, that's the whole story behind segmentation. Uh, you can look at time spent on level zero. Uh, you can look at, so there's another segment they call the small shoppers, right? So, so these are, again, they have certain different behaviors. Uh, they, some of this group actually tends to spend a lot of time at the food court. So you can see that out there. Uh, you can see whether people who go to the food court also go to the movies. Uh, it's just basically, it's not, you know, it's, it's really, you know, uh, it's kind of, you can do all kinds of fun stuff, okay? So that's, that's the technical document and this is the data, right? So that's the... Uh, device ID for the cell phone, um, and basically the X, Y, lat long coordinates, um, and you know the sections and st other stuff like that. So, any questions? Is the MAC ID private data? I mean, like, can you uh, share that and so on? Uh, <laughs> I mean, you could easily uh, replace that with some code, right? It, it has it has been de-identified actually. Oh, it has been Yeah, it has been done. Right. So that's yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, I just... I <laughs>
the region, the location identifies the radius of that area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so part of what they had to do also, which we didn't want to build into like a teaching case, mm -hmm. was they actually had to look at some of the accuracy, how, how accurate was the triangulation. Uh, right. So this was, for the, for the client, they actually did it. I mean, we kind of left those details out in this case. Uh, in the bush mentioned you are calling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Talk about privacy. Yeah. Um, so um, I will... Um, I will I will share all of this. If those of you, if you want to be part of the Slack channel that we created, um, I can I can I created another channel out here, Slack team. Uh, I want to make sure I use the right words. Um, so this is the team I was talking about earlier on. I can add I can add everybody in the Zoom if you're interested. You just let me know. Uh, all I need is to, uh, you'll get an email link, and I'm, I, you know I already posted this deck here, but we can post all the zip file with all the materials. I just talked about, uh, and yeah, that's it. So you want an email to opt in, or you just put everybody in and opt out? Easiest thing for me, if I get some from the organizers, maybe like a common separated uh, list of emails. Yeah. 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 Send them a spreadsheet with all the fees. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 others can do too, right? I mean, and you can you can you know, and I'll I'll make Roy the admin, and you know anyone else who wants to. Get it. So you can create channels. You can invite people. Do you expect yeah. uh, any personal information, like occupation, email address? <laughs> no, 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 no. Are you talking about the mall or me yeah. personally? <laughs> <laughs> the mall. Uh, actually, so they, they obviously they want to understand the consumers better, so they do everything that other companies do to try and you know link these people to other data sources that they get, uh, right? Um, Axicon and things like that. Uh, but they're pro probably at a very preliminary stage with that. Um, yeah, they do. They do. People have to sign up, right? When they when they first sign in, so they have email addresses. Email. Yeah, we we didn't use it in phase one. Okay. Um, I don't know, Gautam. Yeah, so now they ask people to enter the zip code and the age, and uh, so a few things they ask. Or maybe at that when you created the zip code, now they ask you. Yeah. Where is the zip code? Laura has a question. Why not? <laughs> Just accept it, Laura. It's just going to happen. Oh, no, no, it is happening. I, right. I'm accepting it. I'm just, I need to be sent. No. What, is, what is perhaps the, the biggest impediment you faced when talking with these clubs? I mean, was it the legal? Uh, the biggest impediment usually is they don't know what data they have, right? How, how do so, you get them to start collecting that? Because they say you have to show them examples, other use cases, right? So year one, when we didn't have any of these, we used to talk about our research and the kinds of things we could do, right? Uh, so you have to give them examples, you know, of the kinds of projects that can be done, and then they say, "Oh, yeah, all right." You know, so one of the interesting stories this time was, you know, there's a uh, like a company called Polaris. They make these all-terrain vehicles, and many of them are burning up in flames. So they are getting a lot of bad press. So they want to predict recall of the variables. So very ambitious project. We took it on actually. It turned out that they didn't really have the data. It was in so many different places in the end. So their goal was to have a prediction solution in the end, but it turned out to be still just lot data engineering and some exploration out there. Did legal ever create an issue? Like um, they have to run it by legal, <laughs> but it usually works out. I think uh, companies are, they find it easy to say that, okay, this is like a student project, we're working with the university, that part works out. The other thing you should worry about is the, the where the data sits and the, the kind of the collaboration. So basically we say that we are open to any model that works for you. So a lot of the times, it's remote access into their servers. Uh, sometimes it's data sitting on university servers that are certified to be secure. Uh, we work with McKinsey. They gave us a three-page checklist to make sure everything is, uh, you can't cut and paste, you can't copy and paste the data, all those functions are disabled on those machines. So again, we have actually a dedicated IT person. He's a DevOps person who helps us with that. Uh, so that, that's a key role, actually, if you want to do this. Uh, sometimes the students, and this is happening more and more, they physically go and work in these companies. So they go to Best Buy every week, and they spend time there, and then they get to know the people, and they, they can build those social ties with those guys. We've um, also seen like a company issue laptops. That's company yeah. issue laptops is common. Um, yeah, usually remote access into their data lakes or data servers. Yeah. After for this topic, there's a really neat package called SynthPop. I don't know if you've heard of it. It is made by the National Health Service in, in Britain uh -huh. to encourage research on healthcare data. Uh -huh. And what it does, you give it a data set, it'll synthesize a new one that has very similar to kind of looking data, but totally synthetic. Right. But has all the properties, right. statistical properties of the original data. 
Yeah, yeah, no. So I, synthetic data sets are also really interesting, actually. So part of what we started doing was we, these projects happen in the spring, and the idea is our, our curriculum starts in the summer. So by some end of fall, they're dangerous. They actually know a few things, right? So then they can start working on some of the stuff in the spring. But we felt that we needed to do this kind of thing even earlier in the curriculum. So now in a summer course, the course I teach, which is the intro to analytics course, we have a four-week live case run as a contest in that. And our partner this year is PwC. And they will never share client data, right. but they have synthetic data. Right. So, so it's an insurance setting, I think. Uh, that's good. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.